All right guys, welcome to Performance Firearms Channel. I'm John Rodriguez and today we're gonna to be talking about three gun rifle setups, so stay tuned. Stand by. All right guys, welcome back. So today's video is gonna be on what makes a three gun or a competition rifle a competition rifle. Why can't I just get a rifle that's built from the factory, uh, factory mil spec rifle and go shoot a match? Well, you can, you're just not gonna be, um, not gonna put that rifle to its full advantage. Um, it, the rifle's gonna be for sure over gassed, trigger's gonna be heavy, um, it's get, you're gonna feel more recoil because it's usually not gonna have a comp. You're not gonna have any adjustable gas. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk to you about what goes in to a three gun or a competition rifle build setup. All right, you can buy one if you want. There's a lot of companies that make some. I know that uh, competition rifles just off the top of my head. I know there's Armalite makes some, Stag makes some. So there's a few other companies, just those are the companies off the top of my head that I can think of. These are, this one's a, a build, this is a memorial build. Um, I won this receiver set at Atlanta 3-Gun um, Championships a few years back. Um, and the one of my good friends and co-match director of that match is Chris, Chris Palmer. And he passed away, so I built this right from, as a, as a memorial, memory of him so uh i'm gonna just go over some of the things that are there i have another a bunch of parts next to me and we're just gonna go over that so let's talk about um let's talk about just the front half and then we'll work our way back all right you need a good comp all right there's plenty of good comps um it needs to be shorter than three inches those are the three gun rules so make sure you abide by that there's this is an awa gun so if you go if you want the exact same comp i'm running uh, there's only one way to get it. You're gonna have to go on Instagram and go to AWA Guns and DM them and ask to buy one of their comps. This is a really good comp. A couple few people that I know are, are running them personally. I'm running them. Rihanna Kalik is running them. And believe back in the day, I don't know if he still shoots, I haven't talked to him in a while. James Casanova from the Nevesky team was running one. Um, so yeah, AWA is a really good comp. There's also UM Tactical, Brian. The Rage Break is really good. Um, and so is American Precision Arms, the APA. They make some good uh, breaks as well. So check them out. All right, from there, you're gonna need a good quality barrel, guys. Good match grade quality barrel, okay? Um, you can go with whatever manufacturer you want. Just make sure it's a match barrel. It doesn't have to be a 223 Wild. It can be a 556, as long as it's match. As long as a match, good quality barrel. Uh, twist rates really don't matter. I mean, don't get a one in nine, of course, but a one in eight or one in seven are just fine. Um, that uh, from there, all right. So you got the break, you got the barrel, whatever good quality barrel you want, but it has to be a quality barrel, guys. Um, and there we're gonna move into a handguard. I like to go for 15 inch handguards because most of my rifles are going to be. Um, eight. Well, this is a 17.3, so you're gonna be 17.3 or 18 inches for most of my three gun rifles. I do have a 16, but either way, a 15 inch rail. I like I like having that rail space where I can, you know, have my hand all the way out and have you know. I usually keep my hand right around this portion, but I would I do like to have that extra rail space and uh, for my 45 degrees. So different rail size, guys. Um, this is a really good rail. It's from um, Midwest Industries. I've had this one for, whew, I've had this one at least five years. Really lightweight, real good. Okay. Now, when it comes to barrel size, guys, like you said, I, I like to run 18 uh, or, or 16. I do know some people that run 14.5s. Now, if you run 14.5, of course, you can't run 15. 
inch handguard, but try to get the longest possible handguard that you can for that. Uh, also, um, you, um, rifle systems, right? So uh, gas systems, do you go with a carbine length? Do you go with a mid or do you go with a full rifle? That, uh, definitely if you're gonna go with a um, 16 or 18, definitely go with mid or rifle. Okay guys, I have a 16 inch rifle, believe it or not. Uh, but for the 16s, I'll go mid length, uh, just because a 16 uh, inch rifle length was only built by a few people. And um, the person that I know that was doing it is no longer in business. The, the, the gun runs fine. It's just, it takes a lot more tuning. So mid length 16, full, length, uh, full rifle length uh, for, for the 18s. Okay, that's what this is, this is a full rifle length. Okay, so now that we got that, you're gonna need an adjustable gas, uh, adjustable gas block. All right, guys, there's plenty of them on, on the market. Um, there's some that use set screws, there's some that just, um, I, fortunately, this company is no longer in business, but this was a micro MOA governor, uh, and it uses a switch plate. Uh, it's a little harder to tune because you have to remove the plate and pre-drill it, uh, but you were able to tune your gas like perfect. So that's one of the gas blocks that I like. I don't know if they're still around. Last time I checked, they weren't, but there might be another company selling them. Um, uh, but any gas block, any adjustable gas block, there's a bunch of companies that make SLR, there's a bunch of one that make really good gas blocks. All right, once you come down, so that's pretty much the whole front side of the, of the rifle. All right, now we're gonna go into the, the midsection, pretty much the hardened body of the rifle, right? This midsection right here, everything that you're pretty much gonna go over. So I'm gonna move this aside, and we are going to talk about the first thing you need, you need to start with a good receiver set, okay? I would recommend, I mean, you can do it off a of forge, but I recommend a good billet that has no play. Th these are old, um, and these have a little bit of play in them, but these ha also have 40,000 rounds through them. You can see they're not new. I had these for a few years. These were, this was actually my three gun rifle a few years ago, and you can hear, it does have a little bit of play, but not too bad. Um, yeah, a good forge receiver set. Uh, this rifle here does not have any play at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, I need a hammer and uh, something hard to, to break it open, okay? So from there, which I'll be opening it in a minute because we're gonna go into the BCG, all right? So the BCG uh, is pretty much gonna be one of an important item. All right, most factory BCGs, I'll just go to factory M16 BCG. Here you go, factory MC. I don't even know if the gas tube guys, these things are old. So this is a, a failed, uh, failed zero BCG. I won at a match a few years ago. It's just their standard. Um, and then this is another one I had stand, uh, that is titanium nitrated. Okay, these BCGs weigh about the same. They're about almost 12 ounces, about 11 and change uh, ounces, right? Not that, they're pretty heavy when it comes to the BCG's uh, weight size. Um, there's a few different types of BCGs you can get in the low uh, low mass or lightweight BCGs. There's aluminum, which I don't recommend. There's titanium, if you have the money, they're fine. And um, steel, which work, work fine. So these are the different BCGs you got to choose from. I don't like the nickel boron. The one in here is nickel boron but I really got it more for the lightweightness of it than I did uh, for anything else. All right, so let's take a look at what a lightweight BCG looks like. I'm gonna break this open right quick because this is, it's super tight, guys. Okay, so this is gonna be your lightweight BCG. Okay, that is an, I'm sorry, I, I haven't shot three gun in so long that a lot of these parts are pretty much, you know, even been discontinued. Some of these companies aren't even no longer around, but just you get the plain, um, the main idea. So this is a lightweight or low mass BCG. There's a couple companies that make them out there. This just happens to be the lightest BCG that's steel. So it's 8.2 ish ounces. Uh, you're saving, you know, about three ounces on the BCG alone. That helps with what's called secondary recoil. So uh, when you build a rifle, especially for competition, there's muzzle flip, right, or muzzle rise, right, where the muzzle does this, 
you try to minimize that with comp and gas and then you have what's called secondary recoil secondary recoil is when the bcg goes all the way back and hits you know and hits the uh, buffer tube and you get that that back and forth okay you have this and then you have this so when you're shooting uh, a standard rifle you'll have something that looks like this okay when you're shooting a three gun rifle it should be this pretty much nothing okay and i'll post up some videos so you guys can see that i'm not talking shit or making stuff up Um, okay, so we got the lightweight BCG guys um, Recoil magazine did a uh, really good uh, BCG comparison if I can find the link I'll post it below basically tells you uh, what companies and what do they weigh um, and pretty much the difference between I think these and a titanium is like one ounce so if you want to pay $200 more because titanium BCGs are usually about 400 bucks ish uh, I know aim shooting sports has some good ones uh, actually aim sport has one like this I don't know what that weighs but it's almost identical to this one and it's like 119 okay and it comes in different finishes so that's also a good one to go with um okay so now that we got that right we got the BCGs done put that aside right quick what else is in the midsection all right the midsection you're, gonna, you're also gonna have a trigger you're gonna need a good quality Trigger. This is an AR Gold. Uh, I run AR Golds. Those are the only triggers I run. Uh, but there's plenty of triggers out there. Whatever trigger you just happen to like better, that's what you go with. I like AR Golds because they're they're light and they're fast, and they're what I like to shoot. Okay. So that concludes all of the internals. You know, minus. Um, I always recommend you get some type of anti-rotation or anti-walk pins. Uh, believe it or not, these are actually ten bucks on Amazon. Uh, they're, they're not anti-rotation, but they're anti-walk, so I won't have any left or, you know, I won't have the pin fall off. Uh, and they work fine. I've had, uh, I've had these for a little bit, maybe two years now, and they work just fine. Uh, from there, we're going to go into stocks, stocks and buffer systems, guys. So let me, let me put this in there. tight all right so stocks and buffer systems right so you know there's there's plenty of different three gun stocks out there um a lot of the guys will build build it with uh, the uh mission first uh it's lightweight it's nice for building a lightweight it's really nice it's got nice padding you know you can get up on there it gives you a good cheek weld i mean even though for me a good cheek weld will be here so um uh, but i have a really low cheek weld on, on all my rifles so I really have to get really down low on it, but it's good right here. I'm still making contact. I still have enough pressure on it. So it's not a bad stock. I recommend the Mission First Tactical. Uh, I ran on my rifle, I ran for many years, and I still run it. This is actually one of the stocks that's on the, the Valkyrie build. Okay, so this is the Royal Arms feather, uh, Featherweight Light AR stock. Uh, they're not super expensive. They're super light. They're modular. You have uh, comb adjustment. You have length of pull adjustment, and you can put uh, s uh, swivel studs, uh, sling studs there. Okay, and it comes with its own buffer tube. Um, the only thing about these buffer tubes is that they were specifically designed for um, standard carbine um, length uh, buffers but no aftermarket buffer so aftermarket buffer would be which is our next item would be this okay that is a uh, jp silent capture spring that is also a great uh, system but it had to be modified in order to fit in here it actually doesn't really fit all the way okay so um you have to modify these by rounding it off on the side with the center because it, they weren't designed for this so but any other stock would work uh xlr makes some uh and you can use the uh the lightweight uh buffer system i'm sorry the side capture spring okay so definitely a must when it comes to buffers um uh, i just put this one together the other day it does not have one um but because the gas is tuned 
I couldn't run a, a full factory mil spec one um, with an H1 because it wouldn't cycle. Um, so I cut a few, I cut like three, three or four coils off the back and it's running great um, because it just doesn't have enough gas uh, to cycle. Now it runs perfectly, has perfect ejection. All right guys, so that's what comes into uh, a precision, um, it's pretty much a precision rifle build. I, I would, I mean, if you're building a DMR uh, setup as well, uh, for like a, a PRS gas gun system, build a three gun rifle and put a, uh, a um, higher magnification optic. If you look at my Valkyrie build, it's identical to this rifle pretty much. Um, it's got some different rails, and but the trigger's the same, buffer system is the JP captured. Uh, I'm limited on, it has the, uh, you know, a factory mil spec that, but I, I, I tuned the gas and it's got a break on it. So it's pretty much same setup in a Valkyrie. You can do the same setup in a 308 and an AR-10. Um, you can do pretty much the same setup with any, any rifle. So guys, uh, and then of course you have different divisions. Uh, this rifle is set up for, I mean, if you have to take the bipod off, but it's pretty much set up for, um, what's it called? used to be called limited, then it was called, I think it's called practical now. Um, and you have a very a low powered variable magnified optic um, and you can have iron sights. So I have iron backups at a 45 degrees. I'm lefty, so they are on my left side, okay? Um, and this is a one to eight uh, powered optic. Yeah, guys, so that being said, that's what it, takes to have a full competition uh, rifle. I mean, there's little parts and details. Um, you know, there's the 45 degree throw safeties. Highly recommend those. Uh, I have those on my PCC right now. Um, you know, grips, you can get whatever grip you want. This is running a, a VZ. I like the VZ, but you can grab any grip that you like. It's all about preference. I'm talking about the actual performance components uh, to make sure that you run a uh, you know really well gassed um, competition gun and how do you now that we say all that stuff right you have the rifle built and it comes to tuning uh, I'll do a separate more detailed video on how you know your rifles tuned perfectly but pretty much you, what you're gonna do is you're gonna close your gas block all the way you're gonna put one round one round and you're gonna insert it and chamber it you're gonna fire all the way closed, the gun's not gonna cycle, right? So the gun's not gonna move, you're gonna have to eject the empty round. You're gonna give it a little bit of a turn. Put another one, put one round in there, do that again. Until you can get the gun to lock back on one round, uh, and that'll be your gas setting, right? Then after that, just to make sure that you have enough so it's not one of these guns that, you know, people say, you know, it's a competition gun, they fail, they're not reliable, all right? fill up the whole magazine so you put the much tension much friction as you can on the actual uh, bolt that's running on here right because that takes more gas you you put a full mag one in the chamber full mag and you run a few rounds to make sure it can uh it cycles without a problem and once that happens you can if you want to be even more even more sure that it's more reliable you can give it just a tiny maybe a quarter of a turn more and just lock it down and your rifle is 100% tuned your brass should be spitting out this way or out in this direction if you have any any uh, brass that's being spit out in from your three o'clock to your one two twelve o'clock uh, it should definitely you, your, your guns over gas so you want from three o'clock out to maybe you know four or five that's perfectly that's perfectly uh, gassed okay guys so I hope you enjoyed this video uh, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you at the range.